Can you combine a family vacation with a training camp? And is Kalpa actually worth the hype? Just got back from a trip to Calpe, Spain, where I went for family vacation and of course to ride my bike. And in this episode, I'll try to find out if I can actually combine family vacation with a training camp and to see if this place is actually a cycling paradise. We had a lot of bags packed for this trip. Two bikes, one bike trailer and a normal suitcase. Luckily, we live close to the airport and can get there pretty easy. Then a three hour flight to land in Alcante, around an hour drive, and then we were in Calpe. So fairly easy travel situation, taking all our bags and our one year old into consideration. We went to Calpe with our friends, Martin, Lina and little Matteo. Martin is a good bike rider, like a really good bike rider. He used to be a semi-pro and has actually been to Calpe many times for training camps. Actually, many pro teams go to this area for early season training camps, but we'll get back to that a bit later. Unfortunately, Martin broke his hip some weeks before takeoff, but luckily it wasn't in a bad way, but he wasn't able to ride his bike as much as he otherwise would have done. All right, day one. Martin and I went off in the morning to get in a nice ride. First thing I noticed was lots of people riding their bike. Not as crazy as Mallorca in the spring, but still lots of people. But in a good way, vibes were great. We started out along the coast and then climbed the Benita climb. A beautiful climb that most people start out their ride with. Martin did around two hours and I continued till I had the three hours on the clock. First impression of the area, great roads, no crazy traffic, people in cars were very patient and great climbs. Day two, we rode a bit shorter, around two hours. My wife wants to ride her bike as well, so of course I had to take that into my planning of the rides as well. One thing I noticed throughout the week was that I saw lots of pros. I saw pros riding together from different teams and also just riding along alone. So I guess most of them were actually living in this area. Pros often have the opportunity to live anywhere they want. So I actually see this as a sign of this place being a great place to ride your bike. So as mentioned, around two hours, a nice little loop, and then it was back home to enjoy our families. Day three, family ride. We got ourselves this bike trailer. We got it for vacations like this, but also just for everyday transportation back and forth to daycare and stuff. In a situation like this, it gives us a great opportunity to actually ride together without having someone else to take care of our son. We actually plan to do some bike packing this summer, so this was a great chance to test if he actually wanted to sit in this trailer for longer periods of time. So we packed up Sven and some snacks, of course, did the Benita climb and uh, went off to get in some training as I obviously ride pretty slow when I do climbs with uh, this trailer. Halfway through, we had a cafe stop at this pretty cool cycling cafe, 5311. Got some coffee and a cake and then it was back home to chill out by the pool. I got in around two hours on the day. Day four, this would be my longest ride and Martin had planned out a nice ride. We did a loop where we came up the backside of Col de Rates. And rode 
down it, a very famous climb in this area, but more on that later. At about halfway through, Martin's hip started acting up and he went on home. I continued on alone and did some exploring of the area. One thing that's very cool about this place is that after just a few days riding, you get a pretty good understanding of this area. This means that you don't have to spend lots of hours planning out your ride and looking at maps and stuff. After you get to know the names of a few places, it is very easy to navigate. I see this as a huge win when you go somewhere to train. You don't have to spend too much time planning, you just dress up and go ride. On day four, I got in three hours, 45 minutes. A short interruption in this video. I have a goal of making this channel into something great. So it would really mean a lot if you would want to subscribe to my channel. Give this video a like. If you are already subscribing, thanks a lot. It does really mean a lot to me. If you want to be sure to get notified on new videos, you can also sign up to my newsletter. You'll find a link to that in the description and the pinned comment. Back to Calde. Day five. We started out the day with some quality family time at the beach, which was awesome. Got a coffee, played around, perfect family time. After that, I got on the bike and I had one goal in mind. Ride to Calderades and climb it, try to push the pace a bit and see what time I would end up with. All right, so I'm standing around halfway down of Calderades or however you want to pronounce it. This is a crazy famous hill within cycling. Many of the top world teams in the world come to this area every year for team training camps. So they use this specific climb as a place to do some early season testing. So I just went up the hill, tried to push a decent power all the way. Got up in a time of around 21 minutes. Just uh, checked Strava and the uh, com is just below 13 minutes. That's insane. Just simply insane. The rumor has it that the time Jonas Vingegaard some years ago did up this hill is the very reason that he got a contract with the uh, Jumbo Visma. I don't know if it's true. I just know that uh, they keep an eye out for people riding on this hill. I'm probably not gonna get a world tour contract by the time I did. But uh, yeah, great fun anyways. Cool hill, great views, nice weather. I got in two hours on the day with some good climbing and intensity. Day six, last day in this cycling paradise. I sent off my wife to do a longer ride and I packed up our son to go ride with him. On my way up the Benita climb, Nice climb, nice gradients, beautiful views. A uh, climb most people start out their ride with. And I have never gotten this many looks of acknowledgement. Guess they don't see people riding up this hill like this too often. Vamos, vamos. <laughs> I got in an hour and a half, which wraps up our time in Calve. So to the conclusion, is this place worth the hype and did I manage to combine a family vacation with a training camp? First thing first, this place is definitely worth the hype. Most of the time you get great weather, you get great climbs, the roads are great, as mentioned, it's easy to navigate. The cars are very patient. They're used to people riding their bikes. So you also feel very safe riding around here. It's also fairly easy to get to. For us, it was around a three hour flight and then around an hour in car to get to Kelvin. And it's not that expensive either. So if you are looking for somewhere to go ride your bike, I would definitely recommend you to at least think about going to Calve. Secondly, did I manage to combine a family vacation with a training camp? The answer is yes and no. So I did not have a traditional training camp where you do nothing but ride your bike, eat and sleep. 
but I did have a great vacation with lots of hours on the bike and lots of hours to enjoy my family, which for me at least is much more important than hours on the bike. Got in around 14 and a half hours of riding, got my tan lines, did lots of great climbing, had a great time. So all in all, I think this vacation slash training camp was a great success. That's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, see ya.